All right, now that we have our normal map and ambient occlusion baked, it, we can move on to texture painting. So to do this, you're gonna to wanna to be in the paint room. So we've moved from the sculpt room to the retopo room, and now we are in the paint room. So texture painting in 3D Coat works with layers, which you can see down here in the layers panel. It's also a good idea to have your texture editor window open. It might be on stencils or smart materials. Make sure it's on texture editor and make sure this is set to layers. And remember as always if you don't see either of these you can always look for them in the windows under pop-ups and we have layers and uh, I believe we go to textures then we have the texture UV editor which would be this. So when you bake textures using 3D Coat, you'll get a few default layers. You'll get a layer zero, which is usually just the base of your object. You want to make sure you don't touch that. You get a normal map layer, which looks like this, and just gives your object all of those nice surface details. And if you baked occlusion like we did, you'll get a layer for that as well. There's a lot we can do with these layers. I'm going to talk about all these different options in another video, but right now I'm going to talk about all the different painting tools that you have access to. So the very first thing we want to do is we're going to want to make a new layer to paint on. So if you just click this folded paper icon down here, we'll create a new layer. And I'm just going to rename it just like in the Vox tree. If we double click on a layer, we can rename it. So I'll call this one paint. All right. Now you'll see over here in our paint tools, we still have access to all of the same stroke modes that we did before. But now they're controlling paint and opacity. Now there is depth involved as well for the normal map. I'll talk about that more in the next video. But mostly you want to focus on this opacity tab right here. So I'll just leave this at 100 for convenience sake. So the very top tool is the paintbrush tool and it uses the color swatch we see up here. So if I click on that, I can make it say like a very bright and saturated green color. And I can just click and paint. Now as I said, it is sensitive to the different stroke modes. So this one is set to a depth sensitive or a pressure sensitive stroke mode. So if I grab my tablet, then you can see I'm painting very, very lightly and now I am painting very aggressively. Now the next very useful tool down here is going to be this one, a little brush with a couple arrows next to it, and those are your color operations. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to make adjustments to your paint without actually having to do any additional painting. So for example, we can go in and desaturate and this is based on the opacity up here. So if I bring it up to 100% opacity, it will instantly desaturate everything. If I bring it to a much lower opacity, then you see I can very gradually desaturate certain areas. Or, alternatively, I could saturate them. Now this was already a pretty saturated color to begin with, so you're not gonna see a whole lot here. But you can make your colors more saturated. You can also darken or lighten them. And then there's two down here, which is increase and decrease hue. Now when you're increasing your hue, you're actually moving left across this color scale. So if I start increasing the hue, this will turn yellow, which you see it does. If I were to decrease the hue, it would start to turn blue. Now these are also dependent on the stroke modes. So if I picked my polygon lasso, That wasn't very dramatic. Let me increase the saturation opacity right there. So you can see the difference from green to blue. All right, next useful tool is the height adjustment tool. This is meant to work with a normal map. So if I go to my normal map layer and I go to something like magnification, I can start to make this area of the normal map more intense, which you should see coming across 
in the normal map right here. Also, I should mention, you can paint directly on the 2D surface here in the texture editor as opposed to in the 3D surface. That is an option that is available to you. But you see I am making the normal map much more intense. And also worth mentioning, just like in the sculpt room, if I right click and drag, I make my cursor bigger and smaller. I'm going to go back to my paint layer for this next one. This is the shift tool, and it is basically just like smudge, only it does a couple things. You can smudge, you could pinch, or you can expand. So I'm going to say pinch it, and let me go back to colors right here. Then you also have access to tools like a clone tool, where you just hold down control to pick a spot. And then you can, oh, typically it works if you don't change your viewing angle. If I click right there, control click on that spot, and then I just click and drag, then you'll see I will copy that area and paint it over here. But another way to do this is with the next tool, a very interesting one, the transform and copy tool. Let me pick a uh, more of a the lasso stroke mode. The way this works is that I can select an area and then I will get that selection and it will move with my camera. And then I can just hit enter and apply it anywhere else on the model. Very neat. I can also stretch it or rotate it. Kind of have to click by the corner, but not actually directly on the corner, otherwise that will just scale it, so a little off from the corner. And I can rotate it and apply it. So the next really useful tool is the spline paint tool. And the way this works is that you draw splines, and if I just hit enter, then I'll get paint along that spline. This is a little different from uh, the other splines that we've seen throughout 3D Coat. I can click and drag this to reposition it, but uh, the options for sharpening it, you can right click on it, but you also have options in here to make some changes to it. As you see, I can change its size, and I can toggle hardness and just click on those. And as you see, I just paint along there. I can also use something like a width modulator in order to make it wider than the actual brush strokes I painted down, along with several other different options you have access to here. And again, much like with the curves that we saw in the sculpt room, you have other profile options here. That's a pretty neat one, isn't it? Hmm. Another spline-based option is that you can use text with your splines. Let me turn off toggle hardness, and I'll hit escape to clear that spline you saw. But if I place some points here, then you'll see that we get some text, which is exactly what it says right there. Let me increase the width modulator. And it looks like it's still using the uh, double arrows from before. So let me see if I can change that. If I just go to the regular splines and make that uniform. And then I go back to this. There we go. So yeah, the curve profile from the splines tool will affect the text splines tool. And now you see I have some text. Or I can have it say, hello. Or... You could actually use this to do some other interesting operations, like a bunch of dashes could be interesting. And then you can also change the font. So I hit apply on that, and you see we get some text. The spline image is the exact same way, only works with images. And then you've got an eraser tool, 
which does just that. It erases. You have to watch the eraser transparency here, so now it's not totally opaque. kind of have to run over it a few times in order to completely get rid of it. You can also use the next tool to hide individual polygons. But remember, if you hide them, the only way to get them back is you have to hold down control and brush over the same area with the hide polygons tool. We also have the freeze tool, which allows you to select areas and you'll see they're marked with a checkerboard pattern. Just like in Photoshop, you can hit control shift I to invert the selection and control D to deselect it. You also have a lot of other options here if you look at the freeze menu up top. But there you will see those options for unfreezing, invert freeze, or you can smooth it or you can sharpen it, whatever it is you want to do. You can also freeze based on color using something like the magic wand tool. So I go there and I click on this green color, then you see it's only selecting that green, just like the magic wand in Photoshop does. Now in between there is the fill tool and it'll pop up a little preview. This allows you to fill a layer with a certain color or smart material and I'll talk about those in a couple more videos. But you can fill a layer and if you have anything that's frozen, so like if I freeze this area right here and then I fill the entire layer, it will fill everywhere where it's not frozen. Then if I deselect that, then you see we have the unpainted region. Oops. Oh. Let me deselect that. And then the last particularly useful tool you have is the sampler tool, which is basically just the eyedropper from Photoshop. So again, you can click, and this is layer independent, so it won't just pick from what layer you have selected. But you see I can get certain colors up in my color swatch by selecting different parts of my model. Alright, that's just about the basics of all the different paint tools that you'll commonly be using. In the next video I will discuss about the different channels you have access to with each layer and how to paint normals and roughness and metal uh, material attributes.